Welcome back. Uh, more sign plate problems. Uh, I forgot something, but uh, I'll show you that in a sec. There's the sign plate. Tina. Get in there, you bloody thing. Try as hard as I might, I cannot get that Tina into that slot. They're the only ones I've got. So I need to make some more. Damn it. Damn it. Bloody, damn it, bloody thing. Don't know why I've done this, but uh, I modelled it in CAD. I'm not going to use CAD to actually make the thing because it doesn't need it. It's too damn easy. Here's a block of um, cold drawn, no, forged, no, whatever. Crap steel. That'll do. What? What had happened, very, very odd, um, this was only, this um, uh, drill chuck was only in the collet loosely um, for the last job I did, I can't remember what that was now, but uh, uh, it was the, the, um, the nut on the top was only slightly done up with uh, just a bit more than finger tight. Uh, and this, um, uh, this spindle, I've put a brake on the, an electronic brake on the speed controller. So uh, this speeds up really quickly and slows down really quickly. And I think what had happened is uh, um, in the process of speeding up or slowing down, it had stopped so quickly, the nut on the top had enough inertia to keep spinning and it threw itself off the top of the, um, the threaded bit, the thread. Very weird. Anyway, it's back on. I'm gonna put this um, homemade three flute cutter in and uh, we'll, we'll see how we get on. Hopefully it'll be okay. Right, I will just show you this. Uh, I'm a bear of little brain so um, I turned up this some time ago and um, what that is you think oh, what do you need that for? That is basically a, that's a plug that tells you that tool is in the spindle so uh, you you when you're fiddling around with this sort of stuff, you t or I tend to have two or three tools out of the of their uh, positions on this pallet. But the one that's in the spindle, I always keep this uh, in the hole that the one this, this, the actual tool that's live is in. Uh, I think that just helps me. Anyway, moving on. After spending a few minutes messing around, I think. I've got this drawbar reassembled. It's a, uh, it's a little bit of a halfway house to be honest because it's, oh, it's still operating as a, as a standard drawbar except it's got Belleville springs on the top of it still, so um, it's, a, it's a bit of a hybrid at the moment. But that will change. There we go. That will change when I get the power drawbar bit back on it. Good enough. I am typing in commands by hand. M3 speed 1200 
Go. Oh. Shut the door. Go. Oh, we'll have some flood on that as well. While um, while the mill is getting on with that cut, I will show you. I've modelled up the gear that I need to cut with one slight caveat. These teeth, these gear teeth are cut at a 10 degree angle and I've made these square. The, um, as far as the mill is concerned, when we finally get round to cutting this, it's going to cut square teeth. The fact that the, um, the rotary um, axis is going to be tilted over by 10 degrees, it won't know about. So it will cut 10 degree teeth, but it's only modelled up as 90 degree teeth. So uh, if I show you, there you go, that's the, uh, I made a form tool, I can turn that on, there we go, that's the form tool that matches the cutter, I'll show you that in a second, and um, after a great deal of fiddling, in fact I've spent several hours on it, I have made a circular pattern, so if I simulate that and speed it up a bit, you will see that it does four passes and tilts over slightly and does another four passes and then continues round. It says it's going to take three hours. Yeah, probably will actually. This is the cutter. I made a, a, a special cutter um, and the profile on this bit of old um, uh, uh, end mill, the broken end mill, matches as closely as I can get it to the teeth. So we're more or less there, we're ready to cut it. I even went to the trouble of making a bit of a CAD drawing. So um, yeah, you will have to join me next time when I, uh, if you want to see me cut this, uh, and I want to see me cut this as well. But uh, yeah, for the moment, I need to make these blasted T-slots, so it completely threw me. I thought I had T-slots for the job, but I don't. M5 and M9, there we go. M5 is turn the spindle off, M9 is turn the coolant off. So, uh, first cut is done. I'll just whip that over, G0Z50, 50 mil up. G zero X zero right G zero Z zero and if all goes to plan that should be a repeat the same job. I'll go a bit deeper this one this time. Uh, G one Z minus one, so we'll take a, another millimetre, no, we'll go a half a millimetre, 0 0.5. G1, Z minus 0 0.5, there we go. M3, M8, that's turned the spindle and the coolant on, and now uh, G1, X minus 250, I think it was, wasn't it? Uh, a bit of a better cut. Turn on a bit more coolant, I think. There you go. As you can see, even with just a small amount of coolant, it just throws it absolutely everywhere. It is a little bit of a ruse I, I've come up with. Um, I've, as you can see, I've cut two faces, uh, which should be more or less square to each other. It's a T at the end of the bloody day, it doesn't matter. Um, but it's not always that easy to measure, because this, this top is surface is just full of mill scale. Um, it's not guaranteed that that's particularly flat uh, or particularly accurate, um, but this face we've machined here is. So we can reference against this edge to cut this top off. So, uh, and this is how I think I reckon is probably the simplest way of, come, of doing that. Clamp the, right, I've, I've clamped the uh, parallels in that I'm going to be using. And um, all I need to do now is jog Z down until uh, I'll, I'll use a, a, 
an old end mill uh, to set the height of, uh, of the cutter above there. There we go, I'll call that, call that a day. Excuse the wobbly cam, but uh, if I now zero Z and then press that and type eight in return, oh, basically uh, we're saying that that Z position is eight mil above the datum. So, uh, and as you can see here, that should, that is, you just saw me use the gauge pin. This is one of the useful things about Mac 3. While the mill is uh, cutting away over there, you can continue to type in commands. So, um, if we go at the end of this cut, we go G0 Z50, that will drive the spindle up by 50 mil. Enter that. And then G0 X0, that will take the spindle, um, take the table back to its starting position. Then G0 Z18, that will drive us to our final depth. No, sorry, 16, not 18, 16. And then repeat the cut. So G1 X minus 250 return. And then we'll t turn it all off. So it will be M5 and M9. There we go. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. I think that's a very useful feature of uh, Mark III, being able to just carry on typing stuff in. Woe betide you if you make a mistake though. Looks like it's going to fit. Little aid memoir. The bar is back in. It's been secured. It's lifted up slightly because I need to take a good, goodly chunk off the uh, front edge and back edge. And um, I didn't think last time I made a very good job of explaining how this wiggle works. And I don't really think I got it right. So uh, I'm going to have another go. So if I just turn the spindle on, uh, if I go M3 uh, speed of thousand. There we go. And now I select the Y axis and, uh, and I bring it closer and closer until we touch. Now it's important to hit zero for Z uh, on this because you, uh, it doesn't matter with a square bar, but for the, the last time I was using, uh, I did this, I was using the round bar for the sign plate uh, ends. And um, if you don't go in at the same height on either side, you get tangential errors. So um, I think that's what I mean. So let me uh, slowly crank this in, and you'll see eventually we get to a point where it stops running out of true and starts running absolutely concentrically and there you go that's the point when that is now this this spindle is straight over that that edge plus the radius of the of the knobbly bit on the end of that um, uh, that wiggler forgive the, uh, the 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 wobbly stuff I'm doing this handheld so if we go here and we type M5 That'll stop the spindle. Now, um, the Y, if we zero the Y there, there we go, Y is now zero. If I now go to my controls and go Z, drive the spindle up, 
which is duly done. Now if I select Y, oops wrong way, if I go to the other side, so I'm now the other side of the bar, right so now uh, I can type in uh, G0Z0 and it will drive the spindle to exactly the same height that it was last time so let's try that if I hit return there we go now I can type in M not M3 no I was right M3 turn the spindle back on and now we can repeat I'll put you back on the on the legs sorry tripod legs is an old telly term now I can select Y on my axes and do exactly the same thing, just keep going over and over until the wiggler is running concentric and then it will kick over as soon as we're, there you go. Right, so let me just stop the spindle. You can see that uh, on the y-axis we're 21.64 so if we divide that by 2 and we get uh, what's that 10.82 and hit uh, return that's wrong it's minus minus 10.82 do that again minus 10.82 to return okay now if I drive the select the x-axis oops hang on I'm not focused here am I there we go drive the x-axis up so the wiggler clears the work and then type in G0 G0 Y0 there we go. Right, so now this, um, this spindle is directly over the centre line of this work. Um, uh, and you say, well, how do you account for the diameter of this ball? Well, because we've uh, done it on both sides, we've included the diameter of the ball, but because we're only looking at dividing that, the, the number uh, that you get between both sides by two, if you include the ball or discount the ball, it's still the same centre line. Hope that makes sense. I've changed to a six mil roughing end mill. There we go, that's the uh, T-bar, you pardon the pun. Um, that's going to fit nicely in there. Uh, there we go. Doesn't at the moment, because I don't know whether, I've, whether this is a good idea or not, but this, um, uh, these, these round ends actually overhang the, the bottom of the T-slot. So I've designed this so that once uh, you have to take the, end, take the, the bar off, insert them, then put the bar on and they'll be retained so I'll never lose the damn things which uh, is half the battle to be honest so um, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing but uh, we'll see anyway um, there's enough there to make six or eight maybe more so I'll just slice these off on the on the bandsaw and then um, uh, drill the holes that's it drill and tap the holes that's about all that's left um, this uh, is one of my new center cutting split point drills. Uh, that is uh, five mil, which is a tapping size for M6, which is what I'm going to tap these at. So uh, this is doomed to failure, but I'll have a go at going straight through. Uh, I've cut the T nuts off, and I've got six of them that um, 20 mil long, and I've or 20 ish mil long, uh, and I found the center, so I should be able to just whip through there. Um, take that one out, put the next one in, whip through that one, but uh, we'll see. Um, so I'm going to do this manually again 
Uh, da, da, da. So let's try M3 speed 1200. Spindle on. M8. Coolant on. And now I'm going to do it on the hand wheel. Alright, that looked good. Let's, um, let's turn the flood off for a second. Bless my old cotton socks, that looks like that's gone in in the right place. Alright, uh, flood on again. There we go. I made six at the end, and they're, both, they're all retained, so uh, they can't fall out of the ends. So I'll not, never lose them, in theory. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Another foray into making tea nuts. Bloody boring. Uh, what I hoped to make was this um, replacement gear today, but um, clearly I hadn't got any way of holding my uh, rotary table. No my fourth axis on my sign plate, so uh, I had no choice. So uh, thanks for watching, uh, do hit the bell and subscribe banner and um, hopefully we'll see you next time. Cheers, bye bye.